Hey fam, this is a this is an interesting one to me. I th I think it's interesting. Um, so clapping music is an interesting piece by Steve Reich, where you have this pattern that's about twelve eighth notes long, and um, it uh, it has this sort of you know three. Um, three, two, one, two, sort of count to it. It's like a one, two, three, and then you have a rest, and one, two, and then a one, and then one, two, and another rest. So you have this sort of interesting rhythmic pattern. And um, <clears throat> what happens is uh, there's two performers or two groups, and the uh, first one does this same pattern every time there's there's 12 different bars but then the second um group or or performer does this same pattern except um it shifts which uh note we start the pattern on so uh and it shifts forward so um you can actually see in the original music here uh this three two one two and then it um, the this one this this eighth note gets shifted onto the back of the train basically, and so here you can see that part of this this uh, eighth note grouping, which together if you start here would be one two three one two one one two etc. So then we get this interesting alternate pattern right two two one two one. Um, and so, and then each time, uh, you can see we've got these, uh, repeats. So we play each bar twice, then we move on to the next bar. And so it's two bars and then a shift and two bars and then a shift and two bars and a shift and so on and so forth. And what's, what I find interesting, um, when talking about meta sounds is that this is actually laborious to write in music. And it's also laborious to author in a sort of traditional uh, segment editor um, or DAW. Um, whereas in a graph, it's actually quite easy um, because the music itself is algorithmic, right? So here I have my two performers. Here's my performer one and my performer two. And you can see if I play, you can hear the pattern, right? Um, and that's the that's the pattern. It dun 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 dun, and then it does it repeats that, and then it shifts. The uh, second player has to shift. And so here I have um, the trigger uh, for each uh, each of the uh, bar ship bar changes essentially. Um, so you can see this, I just, basically this is, uh, uh, the pattern, just two different variations of the pattern. So the, there, you don't get phasing, um, when they're right on top of each other. So we've got two different variations of the pattern and, uh, and they're just one bar long and they're automatically looping in the wave player. So it triggers play and then it loops and then, um, the BPM is 168 BPM. And then here I just have, uh, you know, just is just my math. I could have done, um, you know, 12 uh, eighth notes. Um, and then, and then what I do is, uh, Every time I uh, repeat this trigger, I'm also counting. And the remember the counters value starts on zero and increments one step up to the reset value. And then when it hits the reset value, it resets back down to zero. So this will go for the first bar, it'll be zero. And then, so it'll basically be one behind. Um, and, 
uh, whatever the one, one it'd, be, it'd be basically one less than the bar number itself. And I'm multiplying that by the value of one eighth note. And um, that's my start time. Remember, uh, that way I'm, I'm basically starting in on uh, each, uh, I'm starting into the phase, right? So I'm moving the phase forward, essentially. One eighth note, every time I start, it's more eighth notes that I'm moving. I'm starting the uh, second player on, and then when it resets, uh, we get this nice little uh, delayed. Uh, de remember when you delay the uh, trigger, it'll get it on the next buffer, so it's not exactly on that um, bar th uh, thirteen. But then it will it will stop the repeat. So then it'll no longer repeat um, because we're basically done. We're no longer shifting, and we basically play the last pattern out, which is the f which is back to DC Alfine, which is back to the bar one in the music. And um, again, this could be authored as uh, twelve eighth notes. Um, Or actually, sorry, uh, this would be uh, 12 eighth notes times two. So it would be 24 eighth notes is the whole pattern length. Because uh, it's uh, two bars. Sorry, there we go. Um, and then uh, and then it'll just trigger the finish. The reset will basically uh, trigger a delay. And it'll wait for those two bars. to, f And then it'll, it'll finish the... Uh, it's the it's a, the fine right, um, and then we just have a simple mixer wherein I'm just leaning player one to the left side, and leaning player two to the right side. That's all that's happening there. Yep, and so this you know was probably easier to to write as a graph than to even write the music itself. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose with copy and paste you can get away with a lot, but still the shift is quite is is a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, you know, every time. So um, so yeah, let's let's take a listen to it. Uh, just double check. Yeah, 20, 168, 12, 24 eighth notes. All right. There's our first shift. That's our second shift, right? Third shift. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. back to the beginning we're done right so okay <laughs> clapping music may not be like the most interesting uh, music for um, for a game but I think what's really what you what this reveals uh, is this specific type of compositional technique which is sometimes called uh, phasing wherein you can take rhythmic elements um, in this case maybe the same rhythmic element could even be the same recording um, although i have two different recordings in this case but it could have been the same recording and you put them out of phase with each other and what results is really what we listened to was taking one rhythmic concept and because of this idea of phasing we algorithmically arrived at 12 different variations of of the rhythm of this rhythmic rhythmic idea and so this you know th th going from something that's like one has one times value 
to 12 times value is actually really important when you're talking about um, game music design, game sound design, right? And, and that's because we are always trying to stretch out our, our ability to vary um, and uh, uh, create uh, new and novel, you know, new, new interest for the player, right, the, for the listener. And so um, this is something that you can kind of put in your toolkit and say, okay, well, I have this, you know, maybe, maybe it is a rhythmic thing. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's some, something as similar as um, some drum patterns or some, or some drum stems. And then you just, sh you shift all of them. Maybe there's, maybe, you know, could you imagine if I had more of these, uh, you know, three or four or five different uh, performers all on different uh, rhythmic shifts and you get different strong and different uh, sort of d le levels of 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 intensity um, as part of the rhythmic experience now imagine if they were different uh, instruments right maybe a shaker or uh, claves or you know a hand drum etc so you could imagine you know uh stemming out a whole band uh, performance and then getting kind of like an infinite variation of uh, rhythmic interest there so this is just to say it's not it's not it's not like a, the same thing as like a procedural you know generation of rhythms and but it is a really interesting way to variate um uh, an existing rhythmic idea um and it doesn't have to just be rhythms right it could be anything that's uh, looping um, a looping sound uh, having the different textures out of alignment with each other forces uh, especially with loops that are the same size forces us to hear the textures out of sync right and and it sounds potentially fresh to our ears um, compared to that when they were in sync right so so yeah i think this is an interesting an interesting example um you know of many things one how a graph approach to composition could be faster than you know writing the music or even um <clears throat> authoring in you know a traditional segment editor and also how we can take this sort of algorithmic concepts and apply them very simply to create this sort of high value variation in in our uh, results so yeah hopefully this was an interesting hopefully i kept kept it short but uh, an interesting sort of look at um at meta sound design and what's capable in uh this sort of approach to composition. Thanks.